At least 384 people have died after an earthquake hit the Indonesian island of Sulawesi on Friday. The 7.5 magnitude earthquake triggered a tsunami destroying thousands of homes. Electricity and communication networks are down with death tolls expected to rise in the coming days. The earthquake hit just off central Sulawesi, which is northeast of the capital, Jakarta. Disaster agencies warned of high-level tsunami waves. We found out the tsunami was reaching up to six meters high. We got the report over the phone saying there was a guy climbing a tree up to six meters high. Videos are circulating on social media showing the moment of impact. Hundreds of people had gathered for a beach festival in the city of Palu when the tsunami smashed on shore. There is now outrage among citizens for lack of warning. But the authorities say that warning text didn't go through because of broken electricity and communication lines. Welcome back and pay attention to this story because it really is a tragedy unfolding in Indonesia. Rescuers there digging through destroyed buildings, through huge mounds of debris for any survivors. This after Friday's monstrous earthquake and the disastrous tsunami that followed that earthquake. At least 844 people are now dead in the city of Palu with the death toll expected to climb much higher. Just look at those images. You've got hundreds of victims that they're burying right now in these mass graves. They're trying to prevent the spread of disease. And then if you missed it over the weekend, stop and look at this video. This is the moment when that tsunami wave 10 feet high is rushing in, slamming into the coast of Paolo. Let's go to our Matt Rivers. Uh, he is there now. I mean, Matt, you know, where you are, this makeshift clinic was not supposed to be a clinic, and there are people in, in, in the midst of this tragedy suffering right on the ground behind you. You know, it, it's, it's difficult to watch, frankly. We have been here all day long, and what these people are putting up with behind me, with very serious injuries, it, I mean, it's hot here, it is humid, there is zero breeze. Uh, to be uh, frank, you can smell uh, uh, from what we talked about last hour, there's, there's corpses uh, 150 meters away from here. Uh, it is not a healthy environment at all, and yet these people are having to go through this because this is a part of the world that does not have the kind of infrastructure that can stand up, let alone to an earthquake, but you know, put a, a tsunami on top of that. They can't do that, and this is the result of that, and these people are going through that. Uh, they're trying to get international aid in here. They're trying to get uh, more NGOs up here. They're trying to get more heavy equipment up here to get people out of the wreckage, but it is a slow process. I mean, just to get here, for us to travel, I was in Bangkok. I came here. It took almost two days to get here, and it's not that far as the crow flies, so if I had that trouble, other people are going to have that trouble, and, and it, it just exacerbates what's already a difficult situation and we talk about the death toll going up it will go up it's not a matter of it's just more a matter of how much it will go up I mean there's 744 homes that we're told are buried under mud about a half an hour drive from here were people in those homes you have to imagine they were how many people were able to escape before the landslide happened we're not sure that's the kind of questions that authorities still have but that's why we know that the death toll is going to go up guys and, and just Matt before you go on that warning that, that Jim brought up last hour that you know the New York Times is reporting there are these 22 buoys that are supposed to indicate and give warning after the tragedy of 2004 and none of them were working and have not been working for a long time is that right 
Yeah, I mean, it, that's the government is denying it officially. What the government is saying is that uh, the tsunami warning, which there was a tsunami warning that went out, uh, people here will tell you that. And then people here will also tell you that 35 minutes later, that tsunami warning was lifted and it's the tsunami wave hit after that. Now, the government is disputing that. But if you talk to all these people around here, especially people that live mm -hmm. on the coastal communities that are now decimated, wooden houses don't even exist anymore, right. they will tell you that something is wrong with the tsunami warning system. Yeah. Goodness, uh, heartbreaking to imagine. And Matt Rivers Thank there you. on the scene for us. Thanks very much. Joining us now is Jan Gelfand, head of the International Federation of Red Cross Delegation uh, in Indonesia. Thanks very much uh, for taking the time. I know we know you have a lot on your hands. Uh, you said earlier that, and I'm quoting you, I don't think we've quite seen the worst mm -hmm. of things yet. I imagine you're expecting the death toll to rise. Do you have any sense of the scale at this point? Um, I think Matt, in your, you know, your report prior discussion you know we get a lot of points really good this is in the in the nature of, of an earthquake and I think that we need to recognize that where he is right now in Palu is not even it's Dongala where the epicenter was this was an earthquake that was 7.5 the Richter scale it was also only you know 10 kilometers deep and that means a tremendous amount of movement and so we haven't gotten you know up and down the coast because of the difficulties in transportation and not even inland where there's landslides, slightly smaller communities, rural communities, the number's going to go up significantly. You know, I, I don't want to. Um, we have, we have, in, in, from the Indonesian Red Cross, we have rescue workers that are beside community community workers, beside the army. They're going to keep going until they find every body, or if they find every, you know, live people. That's just the way that they are. But this number's going to go up, no question. <laughs> I was so struck by what our reporter on the ground, Matt Rivers, just told Jim and myself, and that is that it took him two days to get there from yeah. Bangkok. Okay, if it takes him that long to get there, what does that mean for the time that's running out for people that need to be rescued or treated urgently? What does it mean for just the supplies? It's very difficult because, especially in the area of rescue, you need certain kinds of equipment. You just don't go climbing into rubble and start looking for right. people, even though that's what human nature is. You need equipment so that you keep your teams safe and so forth. That equipment can't even make it there. It's not a question of whether somebody wants to bring it in or not. It's impossible to bring it in. And so that's just causing huge amounts of problems. The same thing. We have the Indonesian Red Cross is bringing in 15 water trucks. Of, we're bringing in uh, tents. We're bringing in kitchens. We're bringing in a, a mobile clinic and surgical teams. But to get that equipment in there, some of it we're bringing in by boat. It was a huge logistical you know, mm -hmm. challenge. So every time that, and as long as that takes, your you know time is going by. So our, mm -hmm. I talked to we have 180 volunteers working in there. Some of the stories that I hear from them, you know, they mirror what we heard what, what Matt said. This is a terrible tragedy. It's serious, and we haven't seen the worst of, of it. And that's oh. that's what earthquakes do. It takes a long time. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to keep following this story, and we're also going to let you know how how you can help because I'm sure there's going to be an outpouring of requests for aid. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Jan. Uh, we appreciate it, and good mm -hmm. luck to all of all of the Red Cross teams doing the work there. Um, if you're watching and you want to help the victims uh, affected by this earthquake and the tsunami, you can go to CNN.com/impact. Again, that is CNN.com/impact. A lot of ways listed there that you can help.